Despite a federal crackdown on pharmaceutical companies and pharmacies, opioid, over, uh, opioid overdoses, they continue to rise across this country. Tomorrow, in fact, Santa Clarita officials will announce new measures to address recent fentanyl deaths in that area. So are we on the right track to really tackle this nationwide crisis? Health care attorney and author Harry Nelson has been tracking the epidemic. The United States of Opioids author joins us right now. Good morning. Thank you for being here. Of course. Thanks for having me on this morning. So last week, an Ohio judge awarded $650 million in damages in a suit against pharmacy chains, CVS, Walgreens, and Walmart. Uh, tell us what you think about that. Will this really make a difference? You know, it's a, it's a really good question whether this is going to um, stand up on appeal. Uh, you know, the pharmacies have been particularly resistant to settling uh, this case. They, they went to trial in November arguing that they weren't the ones who marketed these drugs. They didn't manufacture them. They really just filled prescriptions from doctors. On the other hand, uh, we know that many, many people were hurt by prescription drugs that were improperly obtained. And so it's a tricky thing to figure out what their, their role in this is. Um, certainly, there are going to be hundreds of millions of dollars going into the pot, if not billions, from between, between the large national chain pharmacies. Well, opioid overdoses, they spiked during the pandemic, and some areas do continue to, do continue to see surges. Uh, do you see that changing as COVID cases drop? Well, it's interesting. COVID, COVID definitely was a period where deaths accelerated. There are a lot of theories why, whether it was isolation, increased isolation for a lot of people, uh, um, led them to opi more opioid misuse, or whether it was lack of access to health care. So the numbers seem to have slowed a little bit from, in terms of overdoses and overdose deaths, but they're still going up year over year. Um, and it's important to note, by the way, that the, 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 the deaths are, and, the, and the overdoses are not coming from pharmacy uh, uh, obtained prescription drugs. Mo they're mostly coming from street fentanyl. So we know that today the DEA is recognizing National Fentanyl Pre Prevention Day. This week the White House announcing uh, more than $12 million in new funding to stop youth substance abuse. Do you think that's, that's enough? Are we on the right track? I, I think it's positive. Uh, you know, it's we, the rec getting recognition and getting funding so there's le fewer barriers to treatment, so it's easier to get treatment than it is to get high, is a huge help. And I think calling attention so that people understand the risk it, is a step in the right direction. We just have a long way to go here. Well, in, in terms of a long way to go, can we talk about the healthcare industry? Does the structure of that industry contribute to this epidemic? I think that there were a lot of historic structures in the in the healthcare industry that that it, that made it difficult, uh, that have made the problem worse. I, I, you know, for one thing, if you've ever had a loved one or a family member with an addiction treatment issue, if you don't have a lot of money to pay for care or you didn't have really good insurance, it was very hard to get access to care. Uh, um, so we, we we are seeing attention coming now. For example, to uh, to, to making uh, to making care more accessible, particularly through the Medicaid program and, and, and sort of just lowering that barrier. The other big issue that, uh, frankly, one of the ironies of getting people to stop misusing prescription drugs from pharmacies is that we put, we put the people basically on, we, we got them to shift to a street supply that's far more toxic. So we, we still have a lot of work to do to actually make the drug supply in America safer and, and some hard -ish questions to ask about whether we want to take steps to, to, to make it easier for people to tell when they may be getting an adulterated product of fentanyl, uh, even if it's still an illegal drug. So we've taken, so there's definitely some pieces that the healthcare industry needs to keep working on to improve access to, to make uh, medication-based treatment more uh, accessible, uh, and, but, but, and, and certainly to get more counseling and support out there, but, but, but also some, some hard questions about the way that we uh, we regulate prescription drugs and drive people potentially to, to the street. But, uh, Harry, it, it is still very difficult, though, to get a prescription right now for some of these drugs right now. So I'd say the, the industry's done a, a pretty good job, n not at, at, at that point when it started, but, but right now, if you go to a doctor, if you ask for something after a, a procedure, it's going to be really difficult to get things like OxyContin, is it not? Oh, well, it is. But, but by the way, that's, not a, that's a double edged sword because there are a lot of people with chronic pain who are being hurt by that lack of access. The problem is that it's very hard for doctors to discriminate and to sort of discern appropriately between 
who might be misusing drugs, taking drugs for the wrong reason, mm -hmm. uh, and who really needs them. But I, I think we have, a, I think, I think there has been improvement, but there's a long way to go. We need a lot more screening. For, for example, another layer of this is the relationship between opioid use and mental health, and getting more screening so that we identify people who who have an underlying depression or anxiety or post-traumatic stress issue, uh, and screening for that so that they get appropriate care. Uh, rather than having those people sort of out there vulnerable to, uh, to opioid access. Uh, Harry Nelson, we appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us. Harry is the author of The United States of Opioids. For more information, uh, you can visit nelsonhardiman.com. We'll be right back.